me ask you about something else that was a, a topic of interest related to you, Comptroller, and the press this year, and that was your announcement uh, in your mid-60s <coughs> that you had had a, con a sort of conversion on the position of, uh, of abortion, that you had been pro-choice, not pro-abortion, as you pointed out very aggressively, pro-choice for a very long time, and that you decided uh, uh, that you were now pro-life. Um, I want to ask you about that. Could you, could you talk about that, please? The, the intersection and the tension between uh, government intrusion and religious conviction and personal life is a very strong tension. And it sort of came to a head in my uh, sort of personal life back when we were at the Department of Agriculture really thinking about the role of government mm -hmm. with kids and schools and feeding them and, and what was the appropriate role. And um, I have sort of always been kind of a not government fan as writing the private property rights bill, et cetera. But the notion that in the 21st century, in the 21st century, abortion is, it seems to me, to be a form of birth control really, I find, repugnant. I find that just awful. And I say this as a mom, been pregnant three times successfully, had a miscarriage, and uh, it's, it's a personal issue for women. But the 21st century, for us to have abortion as a form of birth control, I will say I was wrong. I, I really didn't foresee that we would be at this place. And I would um, urge anybody who would care to read about this to read a stunning book called Unnatural Selection by uh, a lady named Mar Vistenthal. And they are, uh, there are places where they are selectively aborting women, mm -hmm. 160 some odd million. And that makes me very, very sad. Comptroller, why and now? Yeah, but let me yeah, just yeah, add yeah, one more point. Yeah, yeah. I handled, in the Dallas County DA's office, I handled child abuse cases. Yeah. And I have had a long time interest in helping children. And I saved kids from being further starved and beaten and tortured and burned. And I never lost a jury trial when I was trying to save a kid. And children mean a lot to me. I think all my work on nutrition would indicate I really care. And this is, <clears throat> maybe it's my age, but I'm only 29 and holding, holding, holding. Yeah. Uh, but this is something I feel very strongly about, and it's very personal to me and to right. my faith. I, I just, I'm wondering, I, I, I hear all that, I respect it, I appreciate your candor. Why now? Why not a year ago? Why not two years ago? Why not five years ago? Why now? Why make the change now? Well, it's now? been years. It has been years. Yeah. You just haven't talked about this? Nobody has asked me. Nobody has talked about this. This has not even come up, but this has been years. That's why I said back in, you know, the mid-2000 range when I was dealing right. with the role of government in children's lives and what is appropriate. Right. Uh, you're going to hate this question. I'm just warning you. But I need to ask you this because the cynics will say it's interesting that she's considering a statewide race in a Republican party that would not cotton to a pro-choice candidate against two very cons at least two very conservative candidates. If she believed this for all those years before, it seems politically, seems politically opportunistic of her to come out now to say that she's made this conversion because it seems to be only directed toward the election. What do you say about that? I say that most folks would believe that I am WYSIWYG. What you see is what you get. And I am very direct, and I will tell you this is how I feel. And if I retire and go to the ranch, I will not change my view. And in fact, uh, my husband's here. Uh, at the back, and he and I uh, have put our money where our heart is, and we have uh, contributed to crisis pregnancy centers. This is personal. Yeah. And so if somebody wants to say something else, that's... Well, in fact, they're already saying it. That's, you know. that's fine. Yeah. The point is, I am who I am. I believe what I believe. Right. And I think uh, people will say that my record of caring for children mm -hmm. is pretty strong. Let me ask you then, as it relates to this issue, the, the, uh, the last legislative session, the legislature cut $73 million from the family planning 
services budget. It went from about $111 million down to $39 million. So $73 million saved. But at the time that the lawmakers made that decision, they were told by budget analysts, independent budget analysts, that the state could suffer perhaps $200 million in additional costs related to 20,000 additional pregnancies that were likely to occur as a result of family planning services being cut. The words fiscal conservative are in your bio in the first line. Is cutting 73 million but costing the state 200 million fiscally conservative in your mind? So you're saying we shouldn't have babies? No, I'm saying, I'm asking you, everything, everything has consequences. I'm asking you if cutting family planning services is something that you, I mean, I don't, I don't begrudge you one bit your feeling on, this, on, the, on the issue of your conversion to, to the pro-life position. I'm asking you if, in view of that, you support the decision to cut family planning services, which may result in more pregnancies, possibly in more abortions, because there'll be more unwanted pregnancies, and a greater cost burden to the state. I'm asking if that's a consideration for you at all. Well, I was not involved in those discussions at all. The, the office was not asked about those. Uh, I certainly want people to have access to uh, information uh, about how they can um, prevent unwanted pregnancies. Yeah. Uh, so I'm sorry I don't have any more information about that except to say that uh, I want women, women to have information from a reliable source that helps them uh, avoid pregnancies. Right. And when you talked about abortion as birth control being a concern for you, do you support the idea of contraceptive services being available to women and, and, and birth control as birth control, let's say? Yes. You do. So to the degree that family planning services uh, were cut in the last budget and as a result contraceptive services were cut, you're, you don't support that? Well, I want the services to provide it, be provided in a place where in fact it's not linked to abortion. But the, but the, but, but the control, the, place, the places where many of those family serving, planning services were provided were Planned Parenthoods, as you well know, but they were not, it, it was required that if they're going to be participants in the women's health program, <coughs> abortions could not be provided at those clinics. Well, we have given money to the crisis pregnancy centers, right. uh, Joe and I did, because that's something that we thought was a very much better location for women to get help and counseling. Right. And that's why you're comfortable with them getting counseling because it's a question of where they get it. I don't want it linked to abortion services. Abortions, I don't. Right. Even if the, even if the clinics and the women's health program, they're not happening at places where abortions are being performed. Well, as I say, I have not delved into that. I'm right. happy to take a look at it. But the point is, is that I want women to have access to information about how they can take care of themselves without having abortions. I'll say that. A couple more times if you'd like. No, I think I've heard it enough at this point. Okay.